Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Today we have a very special content. Today we have the test of what are considered the best two ESCs for a brushed setup on a Axial SCX24. Today we have the FuryTech Iguana Pro and the Model Bar Regular AESX24. This is the new version they have, specially made for micro crawlers, and this is the best FuryTech ESC for a brushed motor. So let's compare both of them. So here we have them. This is the Iwana Pro version of the Fury Tech brushed ESC. Uh, probably I am forgetting something, but one of the main difference of the Iguana Pro version instead of the Iguana regular version is that it can handle also 3S LiPo batteries and it has a quite a bigger back or BSC. And for me, the most important thing, and it was almost the same price because I got a discount on RC Mart, is that it comes with a switch. So the regular Iguana ESC does not have a switch. So you have to either unplug the battery or uh, buy a separate switch accessory that they sell for something like 10 or $15. It comes with a heat shrink cover because as it comes, it's totally exposed. So you can use it, but honestly, I have not find it very, very useful because you have to keep exits for these cables. Also for this one, then you have to actuate the switch and you have so also from this side you have to open and also from the top you have to open it also for those connections and in the end it's just probably covering a bit of those components of behind but you have to open holes here 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 and here so in the end it's not protecting a lot um of course then we have the model bar regular asx24 crawler which is their new product especially built for crawlers what we have seen in the past for the other ESCs that they had that were not specially made for crawlers was that it was really, really good and smooth ESC. I actually manipulated this uh, after coming. So you can see in, all, in other images that it comes without connectors. So it comes with the cables, but no connector whatsoever. Uh, they only have this uh, connector for the receiver. And the battery plugs come also without the connector. So they come, I, I added this JST connector and I added this switch to switch it on and off uh, instead of plugging on and off the battery. I know they always do that intentionally without a switch because the right thing to do is to unplug the battery if you are not using the vehicle. Uh, so you are not draining the battery or damaging your lipos, etc, etc. So they wanted intentionally to do not include a switch in their ESCs. Anyway, I found it more useful or more practical for me to put a switch. And then, of course, I switch it. I disconnect the lipo every time that I'm not using the, the car. But if I'm moving from one spot to another, I found it uh, practical too just to switch it on and off. As you can see, both have very, very small footprints. If we use this regular SCX24 Jeep Wrangler body as an example, you can see that the motorball regular, it's almost exactly the same size of the side window. And the Fury Tech, it's even smaller. So, but compare one to the other, they are really, really small. Doesn't make a lot of difference because you're gonna have more than enough space inside the car to uh, fit them where you want. And also they are both really, really lightweight. Probably, of course, the Fury Tech can be a bit lighter, but it's not making a significant difference. It's gonna be just a few grams, so it doesn't make a lot of difference. One of the things that I don't like from the Fury Tech, and talking about the switch and how do you fit the system in the car is that even if it comes with a switch something that the model or regular as we mentioned does not include is a fixed switch that it's in the board 
So if you want to reach it from the inside without removing the, the body, you have to place it in a very accessible and exposed place, something like this or that. Otherwise, you will not reach this super tiny and annoying button, okay? So apart from that, both have very similar characteristics and uh, both are really, really well configured and offering optimal performance. Both can be used with 2S or 3S LiPos. As I said in previous videos, I sometimes use 3S, sometimes I use 2S, but I have found that I don't need 3S in most of my applications unless I want an extra top speed or using very, very heavy vehicles. But otherwise, I think that putting the extra voltage and the extra power of a 3S LiPo uh, is cre can create a lot of stress in the transmissions and damage the car long term, always when we are talking about micro crawlers. So main differences, as said, this comes with this type of insulation, a heat shrink cover to use that I found it to be a bit of useless. Instead, and I'm showing another, another one that I have, what I did is to put a lot of electrical insulating paste, which is liquid, and I put it in all the, all the board and in all the connectors, etc. So I waterproofed it somehow. So apart from that, you can program it if you have the Bluetooth connector. Of course, it is an accessory that you have to pay apart. If you don't have it, uh, you cannot use the Bluetooth connection in the app, okay? With the Bluetooth app, you can make a lot of uh, different connections and you can see the telemetry, which I don't find really, really useful in the, in the micro crawler scene, but you can set up some parameters of your of your throttle programming and everything like that. So apart from that, that is very useful, but again, it's an extra that you have to pay for. Uh, I like it. It came with, an, in, with another setup that I have. In my case, I use the brushless take you board with the Komodo brushless motor. And I think that I can live without it. In the end, I only use it to calibrate the controller when I'm making something new and just configuring a bit of like if I want the motor to turn clockwise or counterclockwise and, and that's it. On the contrary, the model bar regular can be set up without with this small button here to program and you only have to bother in using it to program to calibrate the throttle at the beginning, to set up the reverse speed to 50% or 100%. And also you can use it to activate or deactivate the LiPo protection, kind of a voltage cutoff protection. So apart from that, everything is already configured. Both are really silent, so you will not hear the motor whining anymore, like with the chips, chip ESCs out there and they are really, really smooth in control. I think that, as you can see in the images, both even if both are really smooth in low speed, probably the model bar regular is a bit smoother. It's not as smooth as the brushless FuryTech system with the Komodo motor, but probably somewhere in between the brushless and the Iguana Pro. The Iguana Pro also is very smooth, but probably not as delicate and as as smooth as the model bar regular. Anyway, probably to work in the wild, both are more than sufficient. You never use the extra slowliness of the brushless system in the, in the tracks or in the nature in the wild. Probably yes, indoors or, on, or in competitions. It can be very useful, but not here. So that being said, 
then we have to see how they work in those images. Huge modulation from big punch to really slow control. And the Fury Tech also offers really good smooth low speed control. But in the end I think that the Modular Valve Regular is the one that offers better balance and transitions between the punchy moments and the delicate situation to combine slowliness and really good torque. Final verdict and my honest opinion on these two top-end brushed ESC systems for the 124 scale vehicles. I think that both are really really good ESCs but probably they are both oriented to different audiences. Probably in my opinion the motherboard regular is a bit better in general in everything I think that it outperforms the Fury Tech in all senses but just by a little bit. The quality, the materials and the German craftsmanship of this device is just equal to nothing. But probably it's more of a product for the builders and for the advanced user. Because you have to solder the connections, you have to add a switch if you want, you have to put your own connectors here, etc. I know that the good news is that Model Bar Regular is already working in a new version of this. Basically, it's the same product, but with the connectors in the wires for specifically made for the Axial SCX24 like this of the Fury Tech. On the other hand, the Fury Tech comes totally plug and play. So you only have to plug it on the Axial SCX24 connectors in the board. Just switch it on and it starts working. It's more user friendly. You don't need to solder. You don't need to adapt anything. You have a switch, it has also the LiPo protection or cutoff voltage for safety of your batteries. But it's also a bit more expensive and even if the materials are good, I think they are not as good as in the model bar regular. So, what do you think? What do you prefer? Do you have any experiences with any of them? Just leave it in the comments. Thanks a lot. Bye.